There we go. All right, welcome everyone to our um, FTCU class, our virtual Floriani's total control class. This is about vectors versus regular images, um, how to use either one, and of course, why. So which one is better, why you should use this one over that one, et cetera. So um, I'm gonna do a screen share. I'll create a new design. So, um, come on, there it goes. All right, so I'm hoping you guys all see this. Let's make this, oh, it is full screen. No, maybe it's not. There it goes, now it's full screen. Okay, so um, when you open up images, there's two different types that you can typically open. Um, actually, there's quite a few different image types. So I'm just gonna go to the open page and I believe my downloads is where I've saved the latest image. Nope, maybe not. No, wait, still updating, okay. So I guess my rows saved somewhere weird. I actually had just saved an image. Um, so let me go see where that's saved to. Give me one second. Oh, okay. So it did not save properly. All right, we're just gonna use a different image then because my flower didn't save, it's a weird. So there's different types that you can open up for images. So it's kind of a good thing that that one didn't pop up. Um, let's go to desktop and we're gonna go into um, this. So um, different images pop up and some do not depending on your file type. Um, I'm gonna use this image here to show you guys as a JPEG. Um, so when you hit file types here, there's a lot that pop up. Um, regular images are your JPEGs, your GIFs, um, your um, bitmaps, PNGs, TIFFs, and things like that. Um, the other file types would be vectors, which is this, uh, this little section starting with the AI file, EMF, WMF, SVG, and FCM. Um, the difference between these two, vector files have a they're a little hard to describe, I guess, but they're able to be scaled. So you can zoom in or zoom out and you can actually see um, the edges of the design. They still say sharp. Um, or if you have a regular JPEG, uh, which I'm gonna, oops, scroll up to, um, we use this key for an example. This is uh, working on some logos. So that's what this is. Soon as it loads, there we go. So it pops up as a background image. And if I scroll ooh, too far, if I scroll up to it, you guys will notice that this gets very pixelated. It's kind of fuzzy on the edge. It's not a clear, crisp image. However, if I open up a new file, give my computer a moment to catch up with itself. There we go. And I go to open again. And this time I'm gonna open up an SVG file there it is. And I'm going to open up the same image. It's a rather big image, which is why my computer is taking forever. And it's not a background scan now. And see when I scroll up, it is nice and clean. And another difference is if you notice in your sequence view, so if you're following along or if you're looking at my screen, um, your sequence view, it actually pops up as something you can make changes to. So vector files are gonna be your preferred file type. Um, now the big difference between all of, all, all of them out there, um, SVG is kind of your universal vector file. Um, it stands for scalable vector graphic. However, um, the FCM file, if you are a brother machine user, you may uh, see that as familiar because it is the file type for the scan and cut. Um, I like to call it the file for cutting machine, the FCM. Um, so you can actually scan in a design into your scan and cut, save it on your machine onto a USB, plug it into Floriani and digitize it. So that's pretty cool. Um, so that's something to remember. Um, AI files are Adobe Illustrator. So for those of you who are Adobe users or maybe are thinking about getting into it, um, Adobe files are a little bit more advanced, uh, more complicated uh, than a typical SVG file but you can also do more changes to them and have more control. So it's, you know, good and bad. Now, the difference right now between the two, I could take this, click on it here in sequence view and just 
literally click a stitch type down here, which seems really great and exciting. Um, and I can digitize this. This is a huge design. So if I did that right now, um, let's see. Actually, no, it's not that big. I thought it was bigger than that. It's only a six by three. Um, so I could take this and let's do, let's do a standard fill, see what happens. And this will now turn this into stitches. So that's what's the best thing about vector graphics. Um, now my particular file type here, um, because I have uh, the quilting program also built into my Floriani, because you can put them together now, you'll notice that it leaves a background um, design here. It still leaves the uh, vector file, which I can delete. If you don't have um, that program, it will not leave that in there. But if you zoom in now, you'll see that it's stitches. You know, it's not perfect. I'd probably want to play with this, but um, it's really easy to digitize things if they're already in a vector format. So I'm going to remove this. Now let's say you have that same image, the first one here, and you'll notice that it doesn't pop up in all items. It's in the background. There's a couple ways I can take this and turn it into a vector graphic. The easiest way, I'm going to open up this new page again. The easiest way is to go into tools. Oh, sorry. No, it's there. Okay. Sorry, I didn't pop up at first. Tools and Auto Artwork Wizard. And um, I use the Auto Artwork Wizard a lot for images. I'm going to go into my custom designs again. There it is. So the Auto Artwork Wizard is great. Um, I don't like the auto digitizing as much because I find you don't have as much control, but this is literally just finding the edges. It's kind of like scanning something in with your scan and cut. It's finding the edges and turning it into a nice design for you. And this notices that there's only two colors. Perfect. I'm just going to hit next. And then on this screen, it gives you kind of a preview of what it's going to look like. That looks fine to me. So I can hit finish. And there we go. Looks like the same one that I had before as a vector graphic. Um, sometimes you may find that it loses, like, you know, maybe this isn't as nice and circular anymore. So you may have to go in and kind of clean it up. Um, but the auto artwork wizard is a great way to take a regular image and turn it into an easy to use vector file. Now, the problem with many files out there is if you have a very complicated design, it's not going to work. So what I want you guys to do now is we're going to, um, I'm going to stop sharing and we're going to go to the magical internet and find some different places to find a free SVG to use. So that way, um, if you're watching this later or following along, um, you can download a design to play with. And I'm going to show you as well an image that has overlapping in it so that way we can learn how to trace it and how to work with that. Um, so I'm going to stop sharing for a moment. And we're going to hit share screen again and switch over to the internet. Okay, so this was the image I was trying to use for um, background, but it's not working. So we're going to find another one. So I was looking for a nice uh, rose image. And I just searched on Google in um, the images. And we want to find one that's simple enough that we can trace. I may actually just change this to flower because roses, I think, are a little too, uh, too much to trace. My computer is mad because too many things are happening at the same time on it. Oops. Flower. All right, let's see what that brings up. All right, there we go. Yeah, there's some nice ones here. Um, so let's say we want to do this sunflower. Now, um, one thing to keep in mind is some of these items are owned and copyrighted. Um, so it's not something that you ever want to take off the internet and sell. If you're doing something where you're taking this image and using it um, just to make yourself a little shirt or something like that, Usually that's okay, um, but if it's something that somebody's selling, don't just download it. Um, I'm assuming this is something that somebody is selling. Um, so just be careful when you when you find images, um, you know, and that you're you are giving credit if you are using an image that is somebody's. All right, Pick Monkey is actually a freeware. We're going to use this guy. Nope, not save page, save image. There we go. So we're going to save him. This is a nice simple flower and it's also a PNG image. Um, sometimes it's hard to see what type of image it is. Um, the other thing uh, that while I have you guys uh, sharing my screen um, is for 
uh, vector graphics. So there's a lot of free vector graphic pages out there. Um, I like Burton Avenue for things because they're pretty fun to play with. Um, and for hers, you are allowed to use her images for free use just for yourself. Obviously, you cannot sell anything. And that's something I really want to reiterate. Um, if you are taking an image off the internet or using a free SVG from a website, don't sell it or claim it's your own design. You can digitize it and use it on something for yourself. Um, but you know, it's you want to be, uh, make sure that you're respecting the artists that designed these. Um, OK, so this is the design I was going to use as an example. It says, welcome to our patch. And for Burton Avenue, you can go under free files and go to limited time free files. And there's a lot of them. Um, this is just the one that I picked. And you have to scroll all the way down and then find that little download free files button. Um, so I already downloaded mine um, to use, so I can show you guys how to do that. Um, but that is Burton Avenue. There's also SVG Cuts. There's um, numerous other SVG websites. And you can also purchase SVG files on Etsy and other places like that um, if you need something specific that you can't find for free. OK, so we're going to stop sharing here. Um, the internet is a great resource for these sort of things. And we're going to go back into Floriani. Hope, uh, hopefully, you guys aren't getting dizzy from me skipping around. <laughs> All right, we're going to re remove my key. This is just to show you guys. Um, come on, let me delete you. This is just to show you guys what the difference between um, these designs were. Come on, computer. All right, we're going to start a new page. Now, um, one of the things that you're going to find uh, when you are doing an image trace I'm going to show you guys how to work with the regular uh, PNG image of the flower first, and then we're going to go into the vector graphic. Um, because no matter what, if you have a regular image you're working with, you are going to have to turn it into a vector, and then those same things will apply. So I'm going to hit open. And I believe this time this went to the downloads, hopefully. There it is. There we go. In case you guys are worrying, we're uh, con uh, concerned. This is a pot of boiling uh, apple dumplings. It's really good. Just letting you know. All right. So flower. Here we go. And we're going to open it up, and it's going to pop as a background. Now, if I was to do an image trace on this flower, it is simple. So it looks like it would be great. However, because it has colors that are kind of touching each other, um, I'm going to show you guys how this is going to work. So we're going to do a new page, and I'm going to show you how a trace works with something that is not a silhouette, that is not a very simple image, just to show you guys um, why we want to manually trace rather than um, use the know, PC, uh, sorry, rather than using the, the auto wizard. All right, so we're just going to keep hitting next. Now you can see where it has these lines. That's because it's going to separate the colors. So with multiple color designs, it's great and all, but when you turn this into embroidery, you're going to have weird spaces. Um, the other thing, too, if I close up, well, actually, I didn't do it. I thought I saw a pink smear up there, but I guess not. Yeah, so if I close up and um, grab just the flower, um, and I'm going to move it, see how you know it's just touching? The image they're just touching so you'd have to sit there and manually draw the lines into uh like pull them around which i'm going to show you guys how to do this of course um but you'd actually have to make these overlap because otherwise with embroidery you can't do that it needs to actually overlap to a point otherwise it separates and you're going to have spacing in your hoop so that's why um for designs like this we don't necessarily want to do the auto artwork okay so let's go back to our plain flower Come on, computer. There it goes. All right. So one of the things we want to notice first is the fact that we have very basic shapes here in the middle. This is a circle. I'm sure, all of you guys knew that. Um, and what's nice is the gray outline we probably would do as a satin stitch. So we can play with that. We don't, we don't actually have to sit there and trace this design multiple times. So usually if it has a basic circle or shape, I'm going to use this tool up here. Um, when you hover over it, it says rectangle. This is your shape tools. And I'm going to click the ellipse or circle, as most people call it. Now, if I were to just draw a circle right now, you guys can probably see that it's making a weird oval instead of a nice circle. And that's not what I want. But I can hold down the control key as I'm drawing my circle. 
and it makes a perfect circle for me. OK, that looks pretty close. Oh, apparently my circle did not come out perfect. Look at that, it's still smashed. I must have let go of the, the uh, control key. Let's try it again. So you want to hold down control, then left click and drag. Oop. My computer is very slow since it's running too many programs at the same time. All right, I'm going to let go of my mouse, then the control key. Hopefully it worked. There we go. Now I have a nice little circle so I can drag him into the middle. Now what I can do with this circle, I'm going to drag him out for a moment just to show you. This is now artwork. You can see him in the sequence view and you'll notice that there is that um, if I hit the plus sign, there's that little sunshine um, right next to him. That is the artwork symbol. So it lets me know that this is indeed artwork. So in my sequence view, I can click on the circle and I can actually copy and paste it to have two. And the reason why I want to have two is because one second, I'm going to move my little talkie bar. There we go. I'm going to take my one circle here and I'm going to turn it into a fill. And then I'm going to take my other circle and turn it into a steel stitch to go around the outside. Now it, it's all pink for some reason. All right, let's turn this into. Oh, wrong way. Let's turn this into the same colors that we see on the screen. So a light blue for the fill. And this one will do as a darker gray. And if I go to 3D, now you can see how it's starting to reflect the middle of the circle. So we can use the same shape to create both the inner fill and that satin stitch outline. So that's great. Um, a lot easier than having to trace everything else. So if you have simple shapes like a square, a circle, a triangle, I try to use those built-in shapes. Um, but if you don't, like the rest of this at the moment, we're gonna need to manually trace this. So this button here, the artwork tool, it's a pencil. Um, you wanna left click on that one. And how this is gonna work, I'm gonna show you guys outside of the flower, is I'm gonna left click, left click, left click. Now, if you notice, it's kind of pointy there. If I hold down um, the control key and I start clicking left click, it does a curve. And then if I let go, it does a point again. So when you are tracing, you hold down the control key to do a curve and then you will uh, left click, click bleh, excuse me, left click regular if you're doing a plain old line. So we're gonna erase whatever that is I just drew. And we're going to click on our pencil tool again. And I'm gonna start um, kind of in the middle of this outline and I'm gonna left click twice without holding down control to make the point there. And then I'll hold down control and go around the flower. It's not gonna be perfect, that's okay. And then I left, uh, let go of control just to click that button. And then I click again without holding control and then start my control holding again. Then let go, click, click, then hold it down again. Now, if you notice, I am not perfect at drawing this. That's okay. We can fix this all up later. I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. All right, almost done. So if you notice, I'm not gonna to try to connect this at the moment. I'm actually going to um, use a different button to close my shape. Um, so mine is hidden on the screen, but it's on the bottom left-hand side. And it's this little like, someone told me it looked like an angry bird eyeball um, or Kermit the Frog's eyeball, but it's a little circle um, and a little dot inside on kind of a half circle. And it says close shape. So I'm gonna left click on that and it automatically closes that shape for me. I'm gonna delete my artwork circle here and close these little so you can see my new, there's our, there's our pretty flower. Um, so I'm gonna drag this off of our flower for a moment um, just to show you guys what it looks like. The other thing you could do is turn off your background for a moment, um, which is toggled uh, between this toggle view backdrop tool also on the bottom left. It has a little eyeball with uh, what looks like a scene of mountains. And that way you can see your uh, flower. That is definitely a pretty ugly flower that I just drew. So let's clean this up. I'm going to actually put the background tool back on so I can kind of line it up. We're going to zoom in a little and I'm going to turn on the shape tool. It's over here. This is your edit outline inclinations and 
tool for all sorts of finite fixing of designs. So it's the third one down on the left, little pink arrow. We're gonna click on that. And what I can do is actually move these dots, as you can see, I can adjust them. Um, so some of them that I drew really badly I can kind of bring in and make them a little smoother. I can also right click on these and hit line, cusp, smooth, or symmetrical. Um, so I usually click between line and, and smooth, but if I click line at the moment, this would become a point. If I right click and I hit smooth, that now becomes a nice smooth uh, point again. So I can go through and keep clicking smooth and, and making sure that this looks nice and clean. So as you can see, tracing a design is a little bit more work. So it's not you know, the easiest, but that's okay. Um, I, I find that if you're doing logo work, it's a lot easier to, to do this um, than trying to do an artwork wizard or anything else. And you're gonna get a better result if you do this manually than um, if you try to skip that step. All right, so I'm just gonna clean this up a little bit more and then we can turn this into stitches. Oops. Now, if you ever accidentally zoom way out like this, which is pretty much what I just did, except more dramatic, if you double click on your magnifying glass, it'll bring you back to a centered view. So I do that all the time. I, my mouse is very sensitive and I get excited and just kind of hit buttons. Um, so you can always double click on that design if it disappears. All right, we're gonna smooth this out. Okay, so one of the other tools I wanna show you guys um, on this, I'm gonna get out of my shape tool and into my regular pointer. I can also right click on my artwork and hit this simplify, simplify smoothen. What this does is it's gonna go through and remove some of the extra points and dots and it actually smooths out your work. Um, so you can make it a little bit more or less dramatic um, and kind of play with this. And depending on what you're doing, um, it may help, it may not too. So we're gonna say this looks good and I'm gonna hit okay. So once we have that all fixed, once again, I can turn this into embroidery. Um, I'm just gonna use, yeah, we'll do a fancy fill later, but I'm gonna do a plain old fill on this. And then once again, I can either copy and paste, or if I still have artwork up there because I have the quilting program, I can turn this into a steel stitch. And I don't know why my flower is green. That's weird, but that's okay. Um, let's do a nice pink. Oop. I just passed some pink, we'll, we'll keep going this way. Let's do purple, purple is a good color. <clears throat> and color is probably one of the more exciting things to choose. And now what I can do is take my circle and plop it right back. Now, once you start, oops, it disappeared. Oh, look at that. So that's something that's really important is actually the layering. So I'm gonna close my properties menu for a second to show you guys the sequence view. So what's happening here is my circle um, is before my flower. So that's why it disappeared. So all I gotta do is left click and hold down and just drag to the bottom. And same thing for the little steel stitch and just drag it down. And then I can delete any leftover artwork that's in there. And there we go. So pretty easy. Now um, this only has, this has a few layers on it. Um, so sometimes if you have many things stitching on top of each other, or you're going to be doing something like this on a thick project, you would want to remove the overlapping layers. So for example, I can left click my flower, hold down shift and left click, actually, sorry, control, <laughs> hold down control. So left click the, um, the flower here, control, my middle, right click and uh, remove overlapped stitches. And then usually about 0.5 millimeters is good. You do want it to overlap a little. And now our flower, as you can see, has a very tiny little hole. So that way there's not too many things stitching on the same letter or layer. All right, so next we wanna trace the leaves. Let's do this little stem here and the uh, leaf detail, and then we'll do the individual leaves. So this is pretty easy because I'm literally just gonna left click with my pencil tool left click, and then to make it uh, turn into a vector, I right click. And then boom, we have a very exciting line that popped up here. I'm gonna click on this pencil again, and now I'm gonna left click, and I'm gonna hold down control and click at the end, and then right click. And it didn't curve, that's okay, we can fix that. Once again, click here. Actually, you know what? 
I'm going to delete this last one. I think it's going to be easier if I do these stems in all one go. And I recommend the least amount of extra shapes you can have, the better. So I'm just going to hit control and add a couple points on here. Oop, I did a weird thing there. Right click. So it looks like I did a crazy little curve, <laughs> as you can see, because I did not let go of my control key. But again, that's what our shape tool is for. And I can right click on this and hit line. And boom, there it goes. Drag it to the center. We're good. Um, and I can zoom back out. So now with these two lines, we can click on the two of them and just do a regular old steel stitch. And you know, maybe maybe you want to do a little bit something different and have it come to a point here. Um, we can do that in our properties. I don't know why this is yellow. Let's do green. Actually, let's do the gray. That's right, this is gray. Um, now you'll notice that this stitch is on top. So now we want to take this and drag it underneath. Oops, not far enough, underneath our flower. So we're going to have to play a little bit with order. Um, and now you can see that that's going to stitch there. So it's going to take some playing to get used to it. All right, and then lastly, our leaves. Now these are symmetrical. So I'm going to show you guys a cheat. We're going to take this, this singular leaf here, and I'm just going to start tracing. I'm going to hold down that control key. And then once again, let go when it comes to the point, and then start holding down control once again and hold that sh close shape tool, tool to close it off and my leaf is not exactly perfect so again go into the shape tool and reorganize it okay that looks pretty good so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this leaf and i am going to turn him into a standard fill and i'm going to show you guys a quick trick with the standard fills you see how the stitches are going this way we're going to go into our shape tool once again, and now that it's an actual stitch, this weird yellow line has appeared. This is called an inclination tool. And I can take this and drag it this way, then left click, and boom, my stitches are now going sort of the right direction. <laughs> um, in my properties, I can actually come in here and change the pattern to something different. For example, um, let's do corn row two is one of my favorites. Um, and you can really play with it. Um, let me turn that to green. Uh, but anyway, you can you can turn this into all sorts of different designs. I really recommend playing with the fancy um, stitches and things like that. Um, there's some really cool ones. Let's see what that looks like. And you can really make some unique, like that's just cool. Um, now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to copy and paste this guy, and I'm going to turn that into a steel stitch. There we go, that looks pretty good. So now, oh, it's green again. Let's turn that to gray. And I'm gonna close my properties box again so you guys can see. There we go, just gonna close some of these. So we want to grab our leaf button here and I'm gonna hold down shift and collect both the leaf fill and the outline, copy paste, and we're going to use these cool rotate keys. We're going to flip it, boom, and drag it right on top of the other leaf. Now I don't have to trace twice. So if you notice, now the stem that we had into the leaf is, a, is below the leaf. So we're going to have to take these leaves and drag them up to the top. So if you hover your mouse over all items, it will instantly put it underneath. And if I left click, there we go. Now. This is some sort of nitpicky thing that I'm going to do, but I don't like how this ends so abruptly. So I can actually click on this steel stitch here in my properties or in my uh, sequence view. And then my properties, we can actually do a sharp point for the start line um, and a sharp point for the stop line, the start and the stop, um, which will give this kind of a little bit more of a natural look. See how much nicer that looks? So this is something you may want to play with. Um, this guy too, if you notice, um, nope, wrong one, I clicked on the artwork. Let's delete the artwork in the background here and make it a little easier. If I click on him, you'll notice that he kind of sticks out now. So I can do the same thing with him. Um, I can do a uh, sharp point on my start and stop. Now to know where the start and stop is, all you have to do is click on your shape tool once again, 
And you'll notice that the green dot is here, the red dot is there, green is start, red is stop. Um, so that's pretty easy to then, uh, you know, adjust if we need to. There we go, and I centered it. So that looks a lot better. Um, all right, so let's, let's zoom out and see our beautiful flower. Um, I'm going to select this, the whole thing, and move him to the side and compare it to my backdrop now that I covered it. Um, so that's pretty good. Um, a little wonky here, you know, and, and things like that. Uh, but, you know, better than better than nothing. Um, so if I really wanted to be, uh, I can change this. The same thing we did here with our start and stop line, you can also adjust corner type types, and sometimes that helps. So I'll play with that and see what it looks like. Um, like that's the beveled, eh, it looks okay. Let's see what round looks like. That's a little better. So, you know, you may want to play with it and see which one you like better. Um, there's also the corner style, um, and that's just how it stitches it. So like auto turn sometimes looks better. Um, there we go. So again, you want to play with it and kind of see what looks best. So that's tracing an image. Um, so that was pretty easy. Uh, there are some really difficult images. Uh, most of the time when people want you to do a logo, it is not a hey, can you do a logo? Um, I have this great vector file of it. It's, hey, I have this horrible picture that I took as a screenshot on my computer. Can you turn this into embroidery? I'm sure it'll be easy. So um, you wanna be patient with yourself when you're doing traces like this. Um, all right, so let's do a new page and let's play directly with a vector file and you'll see how much easier it really is. Although I do like my little flower, it's cute. All right, we're going to hit open. And this went into my documents. And this was the one that I downloaded from, um, I can't remember the name of the group. Hold on, Just look at my website, uh, Burton Avenue. There we go. Um, and I'm going to look for, oh, there it is, Adobe Illustrator version, that's fine. So um, the AI version is fine. Um, this one has that, and then this one is, I'm wondering if that is the SVG. Let's go over to file type. It says HTML. So most likely this one on the bottom is the SVG. Let's, let's try it. I find that the SVG is open nicer than the vectors. Oh, and actually look, it gives you a preview. Look at that. The AI actually looks pretty nice. Let's just open that. But you can open up any one of these. Um, that's what's nice about this program is you have a lot of options. Okay. There it goes. Okay, so what's nice about this design is nothing is overlapped and touching. So it makes it pretty easy. Um, so I'm gonna close my properties for a moment. What are these little dots? Now I noticed in my sequence view, I have weird little dots that are popping up. I don't know what those are. I'm gonna remove those. Um, so that's something you may wanna look, you know, to see if there's any weird marks or something, you know, maybe the SVG included cut file markings or um, lineup marks if it's for vinyl. So you may wanna remove those before turning it into embroidery. Um, now for wording, let's just start with the wording first. We're gonna start with welcome. You don't want to just turn this into a plain old standard fill. And I'm going to show you why. I'm just going to click on it and show you what it's going to look like. Um, I find with wording, it doesn't look as pretty. And this one's kind of, um, I don't know, it's a little fancy. So if you zoom in on it, it just kind of looks meh. It doesn't look professional, but that's okay. There's another thing that we can do that'll make this look better. So I'm going to click back on our fill here. And I'm actually gonna click on auto satin. Anything that has kind of swirls or shape to it like this, that's thinner. Um, anything that's thin and, and moves around like this, auto satin works better. And again, you're gonna play with a lot of these different functions down here and see which one fits your design best. Okay, so some of these are a little wide, but that's okay. Um, how big is this design anyway? Okay, it's pretty big. Uh, let's say we're doing this for a shirt, so I'm just gonna bring the size down a little bit, which will make it a little easier to work with. All 
Oops, it only size that down. All right, you know what? We'll leave this the same size and then we'll size it down later. Um, so the reason why it has these weird squiggles is because it is actually too big for a satin stitch, where if you look here, this has a nice satin stitch. And then once it gets past that, um, I think it's point, I'm gonna grab my ruler. Yeah, it's like 0.3 inches. Um, that's when it get, when it gets past that number is when the, the satin stitches get kind of wonky. So we can come over here to our fills and instead of satin, um, we could do random or again, I'm gonna go to cornrow too. It looks super cool, especially on lettering. It's my favorite stitch. And I'll zoom back out. Yeah, look at how much nicer that looks. And the auto satin, what it does is it takes those inclinations, that weird yellow line I showed you earlier and automatically spi uh, spaces it to match the flow of the shapes. So it makes it look really nice. So it look, looks cleaner and it, again, you can see it really nicely on the L, how it kind of follows that curve. So that looks great, except for the fact that it's orange. I'm gonna turn that back to blue. All right, so we're gonna come down to the word patch. And once again, auto satin. And most likely, once again, we have to change the stitch type. Um, so this is a great way to play with different stitches. Um, let's do pattern five. It looks like a basket weave of some type and see what that looks like. Now that's pretty cool. And this also makes you have unique stitches if you are actually doing this design that large. Okay, so that was pretty easy. Auto Satin is your friend for designs like this. Um, now, let's change this to blue again. We're gonna close our property so I can show you all this stuff again. Um, and we need to go to the words two hour. This again, Auto Satin. And this one is, is actually pretty good on a regular satin stitch. However, look at this, it does this weird thing down here. That's okay, I'm gonna show you guys how to fix that. So whenever you have weird direction where maybe it didn't sense it right, we can go into our shape tool and take a look. So it looks like there isn't enough little yellow lines to show the stitching where to go. This orange line is actually a break um, in the line, so it tells it where to stop, so that way it won't overlap or do weird things. So we're gonna right click, and we're gonna hit add inclination, and then left click and drag, and you can do it again. And then we'll right click, oops, sorry, left click outside the design. It looks a little bit better. So let's go um, click this again. Ooh, I'm gonna change this to orange because it's for some reason not but we're gonna go back in there again. So you may have to do this a couple times. Um, I'm gonna just change, let's move this out of the way. So I'm just gonna adjust these guys here and see if maybe that helps. And then we'll left click and see what happens. That looks so much better. So you can easily adjust this, like this little bottom of the R2 if you wanna be um, a little bit more um, anal about it, you can say, all right, you know, let's, let's have that be a little less weird looking. Again, you can hit um, add inclination and left click and drag. And then you'll right click to get out of that screen, left click to apply. Ah, much better. So whenever there's weird mistakes like that, you can always go through and fix it. The rest of that looks pretty good. Oops. Somehow I just clicked back into that. <laughs> Let's click our select button so I don't accidentally click there again. So lastly, we just have our carrots. Now we could do the same trick where we um, click on them and copy and paste, but we don't need to because I can literally just come over to my sequence view, left click one carrot and hold down shift and click the other carrot. And then I can come in and let's do, let's do a standard fill. But this time I'm gonna open up my properties Let's play around with some fancy stitches and see what we have. All right, and hit apply. Those are some pretty cool, wow, they're blue. My goodness, those carrots have held their breath for entirely too long. Let's fix that. There we go, now they're, now they're real looking carrots. And then we can um, scroll up and find the leaves, which luckily are right at the top. And we could also do a fill. Now um, with these leaves, 
it looks like they're pretty good on the spacing. Sometimes if you have small spaces like this, it may not stitch nicely. So you want to just keep an eye on that. But that looks pretty good. So um, oops. <laughs> let me click out of there and it looks like our leaves turned blue. So we just want to turn those to a green. And now we can left click out and have our design. Um, so sometimes with vectors, you may notice when you go to stitch it out that it overlaps because as a vector, it's a little thinner than applying actual embroidery to it. Um, we can also change the size of this. Um, I like to do any big changes to this design in vector mode before turning it into an embroidery design. Um, but we're going to change it here and see what happens. Make it a little smaller. As I said, if it's a fur shirt, you want it to be a little bit smaller. There we go. And then we can zoom in and make sure it didn't mess up anything. Still looks good. A little bit on the way of uh, jump stitches here. Um, jump stitches, by the way, I find that if you do have a lot of them, you can always change where the start and stop is, and that sometimes helps. Um, where is my start and stop on this? Ooh, where did they go? Oh, possibly because I'm actually holding on to the whole thing. Oh, you know what? I had clicked the artwork. That's why. I clicked the artwork. There is no start and stop on there. There we go. So I can uh, come in here and see that, all right, there's a start over here and a stop over here. Um, these letters, however, they're all connected as one path. So what we could do to avoid this is I'm actually going to delete this stitch pattern and I'm going to come back up to our artwork and I'm actually going to right click and hit break apart. This will separate the letters. Whoops, a little too much. That's okay. Let's show you how to fix that. So I'm going to just zoom in to see. So when I hit broke apart, break apart, I mean, it took away the centers and separated that as well. That's not a big deal. We're going to just turn this off here. So I can click on the inside shape of the R here and the R and hit shift, right click, transform artwork and exclude. And this happens when you break it apart. But now when I go to take this R and do an auto satin, it's gonna look a lot better than when it was connected to the rest of these letters. It actually won't have all those crazy jump stitches. And I feel personally, especially if I'm doing a lot of these, um, it's gonna be easier to um, do this here and now, rather than sitting and trimming a whole ton of jump stitches. So again, left click, hold down shift, left click the other part of the letter, right click, transform artwork, and exclude. Now, of course, you guys can rewind and watch that as many times because this is a video um, and go back and make sure. And now we can click all of it and hit auto satin. Okay, and look, all those crazy jump stitches are gone, although our lettering went back to holding its breath which is fine. We can just turn that back to a nice orange. It is a pretty shade of blue, at least. There we go. There we go. That's much better without the jump stitches. Um, so you may want to break apart things and, and stuff like that when you're doing these. So pretty easy to turn a vector graphic into um, a file. Now, one other thing I want to show you for stitch type. Um, let's say I have oops, this one, a circle. So I'm going to make a circle and I'm going to show you another fill type. There's my circle. Um, this one here is called a radial satin and it's really nice on stars and hearts and things that have an obvious center of them. And um, this is actually a very thick stitch at the moment, but see how cool that looks. I use that a lot on eggs, for example. So maybe I wanted to add some eggs to this. Um, I can do that shape and then have like a little egg leaning here. And to let it rotate, I can just hover over this little blue circle and just have it rotate and maybe add some stuff. Um, but that radial satin does a really nice look. So I just wanted to show you guys what that was. And you can play, by the way, with the density of these fills. Um, so I'm going to click on welcome. Typically it's a 0.5, that's great. Um, but if you're stitching on something that's really light or really heavy, you may need to play with this. The way you're gonna know if you need to adjust it is if you uh, stitch it out. So let's say you stitch this out on denim 
and you find that it's too heavy, you can actually hit the arrow down, which will open this up, or sorry, arrow up, wrong way. And that'll open it up. The higher number, the more open it's gonna be. That means that the more spacing, think that the number is the measurement of the spacing between the stitches, um, not so much the measurement of like how, how much uh, numbers are in there or something. So um, 0.4 is a lower density and that makes it a little heavier. When I make patches and things like that, what I know has an obvious edge, I'll make sure to have a density of, of about a 0.4. Or if I'm stitching on something like minky or fleece, you need a higher density and of course topping. So that way um, you can see the design a little bit better. So things to be forewarned about, um, but of course always do a test stitch whenever you are digitizing. Whew, okay, let's see. Um, so we went over these different types of images. Um, the other really nice thing about images in Floriani is if I wanted to save this, oop, I clicked the new page button, hold on. <laughs> what not to do, there we go, let's close that. So if I wanted to save my little welcome to our patch design, I can hit file, save as, and of course, you know, save it. The other thing I can do is save it as an artwork, a JPG. Now this does not save it as an actual beautiful piece of art like it was before. Um, it saves it as an image of the embroidery. And if you have 3D checked or unchecked, it'll show exactly what's on your screen. Um, so it's a six by six design. You can even up it to a 12 so it's a little bigger um, and hit OK. And then what I'm going to do is show you guys a share screen. Oops, hold on, I got to actually open the image. <laughs> Give me one moment. Documents. Welcome to our patch. As soon as this loads, we'll, I'll show you guys. There it is. So let's say you are digitizing for somebody and they want to see how it looks. Um, you can then just say, oh, not a problem and save it as that image. And then here you go. You can actually send them a picture of what the stitching will look like. So this is with 3D on. If you have it off, it just shows it like regular stitch file um, without the 3D look. So I like to save it as a 3D because that really does emulate better what it will stitch out as. Uh, but this feature has been very helpful for sending uh, images to people who want a specific design. So that's that. Um, all right, so I'm going to come back into Floriani. Um, all right, so we know we can um, also export uh, vector graphics from this. So Hold on, I clicked a button. Got to wait for everything to catch up. I'm going to exit out of my flower here. Even though I did such a great job at that, and exit out of my welcome to our patch. And I'm going to, um, oop, let's do, let's do a new page. Come on. All right, so let's say I want to come in here now and I want to turn an image into a vector file because I want to use it on my scan and cut. So um, I'm going to use this flower. Um, yeah, we'll use the flower. And I'm just going to keep going through and put in my little ve vector file there. And I want to cut this out in vinyl so I can actually take this now and do file, save as, and save this as an SVG or an FCM uh, for those cutting machines. So SVG is kind of, again, that universal file type where FCM is specific to the brother scan and cut. Um, but if you have a Cricut or a Silhouette, they will also read SVG files. So you could save it as that and then cut this out right on your machine. So pretty cool. Um, and of course, if you tried to stay, save it as a embroidery file at this point, it can't because there are no stitches, but you can save it as a vector. So just like you can, open vectors, you can also save vectors. So for those of you with cutting, with cutting machines, it is certainly a really nice perk. Because let's say I want the green inside here and the blue and pink to be all fabric. Um, what I could do, I'm gonna actually delete those. I'm gonna come into my sequence view and I'm gonna remove the colored parts of this design. 
And I'm going to click on this here in my sequence view, right click and do that simplify smoothen, see if it makes it look a little nicer. It does not. <laughs> Oh, it's loading. There it goes. OK, we're not going to do the simplify smoothen. Um, and what I could do is do um, an applique. Now, one problem that you're going to have, though, is this is a solid design. So if I hit applique, it's going to think that the applique is in between. And I'm going to show you guys what it means. It's going to do some weird stuff. Yeah, so if I scroll in. There's double lines here. It's kind of hard to tell. But it thought the applique was this the actual lines between the gray, which is not what we want. So if I wanted to do this as an applique, I would have to retrace the edges of this um, to do that. So um, we could do the same thing with tracing, or if I want just the outline, um, I can cheat a little and I can take this create outlines button, set it to one, spacing to zero and hit OK, and it should outline, there it is, just the outline of my flower. Um, and so what I could do at this point is now this will be applique, um, and I can add the little circle for applique and then add in some decorative lines here. But let's say, I'm just gonna delete my other flower, and we're gonna center this, which is right up here. There we go. Um, let's say I wanted this to be closed off. I'm going to show you guys another fun button. Um, this knife button here, the slice, we're going to change it to uh, this gap slice. And you can just draw a line and then right click. Um, I don't know if it actually applied. No, it did not. Oops. Let's zoom in on that part. So I probably didn't click the line properly. Let's try that again. Try that again. And you can do past it. That usually works a lot better. Hmm. Oh, I guess it doesn't want to do a slice. Um, so in that case, since it's not working, I'm going to come here and I am going to um, split a line. Right click on this one. Split line, which actually will separate this out. And now my flower is a singular entity. And I can come with this and hit that same close shape key, and it actually will close my flower. And then I can come into here and make this smoother um, so it doesn't look really weird. There we go. And then this guy, I can do the same sort of thing. I can come down here, go into my shape. We're going to click on this and hit um, split line, and then split line again. And now my leaf that is separate. I can come down and hit close shape. And I'm going to pull this away. And I'm actually going to delete the other half of this leaf because I'm going to zoom out, place my leaf where it was about, and I can copy, paste, and rotate just like we did before. And then I can turn these shapes into applique. Um, so I can just click the whole thing. Now it's going to look really nice as applique, as you can see. And I can come in, manually draw the stem, and manually draw some cool. We're going to have to fix that because I didn't add any curves. But we can manually add all of this, turn it into a steel stitch. Oops, I only clicked one. Hey, that actually turned green. It's like it knew. Um, and of course, do our start cap as sharp point and sharp point. Pretty much do the same thing that we just did before, um, but this time it's on an applique, uh, which is pretty cool. And steel stitch. And our flower is all, um, let me close the properties box. Our flower is all pink, um, but we can come in here and uh, change where the deep pink. So you can keep hitting plus on your sequence view and um, and choose different colors. Oh, OK, so I'm going to break up this applique because what happened was, uh, yeah, let's do, actually, let's just do break apart. And let's see if it just separates the leaves. There we are. Now I can change the leaves to 
um, a green. And the flower can stay pink. Oh, the leaves are not green. Oh, it changed the first thing to green. So if you keep putting plus, it shows you all the parts of it. So this is your placement stitch, your tack down, and lastly, that's your decorative stitch. So that's what you want to turn green. Um, I accidentally turned the first one green, which is not helpful. There we go. Um, so the other thing too is, of course, you want to make sure that these, like this line can go first, the uh, stem, oop, that's actually artwork, we don't need that. I'm going to delete the artwork out so I don't accidentally hit it. But my stem I can drag to the top and then um, have the design otherwise in this order. And of course, oops, this one, add my little circle. So um, there we go and center it and applique. So you can make applique really easy too by tracing images. Um, there's a lot of really nice things and applique is a little bit easier to trace and make something that looks really nice because there's our finished design. Um, and this one I didn't even trace, I just kind of you know, did the one outline. So it's a little bit easier. And then we're gonna change this center piece here to be a nice light yellow. There we go. So there we go. So that's applique as well, turning images into applique. Um, this is a rather small image at the moment. Um, so if I was going to actually stitch this out, I would really want to make this bigger. So we're going to open up my properties box again, click all items and scroll all the way over to the right. And let's turn this into a five inch design um, and hit apply. And that'll probably look a lot better. Oh yeah, there we go. Now it actually looks like a flower um, where the other one was quite small. So you can make this whatever size you want, of course. And then once you put nice fabric in there or even fusible glitter, you can do some pretty cool stuff. Okay, so um, I'm gonna stop sharing at this point and I'm gonna take some questions. Um, so for any of you who do have questions um, on the program, um, if you do not, then of course, if you're watching this recording after, you can't ask me any live questions either, um, but you guys can always email us or comment on the video on YouTube and ask us and we will get back to you in a timely manner. Um, our email is schillersontheweb at gmail.com. Um, all right, I think, I think most of you have uh, left the building anyway, planning to watch better later, so. Um, <laughs> There we go. All right, so um, at this point, I'm gonna say thank you guys for joining us. Um, I hope you really enjoyed the video. Uh, if you have any other further questions about image use and Floriani, um, you know, definitely contact us. And once again, I wanna repeat, make sure that if you are using images from different artists online that you credit them, don't sell them or, or upload them as your own. Um, of course, we always wanna respect the artists on that. So, all right guys, thank you so much. And I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day.